Hey guys, Julian here, and I'm back with a video that's been requested for a while. Today we're going to be talking about how to make modern EBM music in the style of Marie Davidson, as well as Boy Harsher. As usual, you can get the full project file, samples, MIDI, presets, everything like that from this video that you just heard in the intro is available right at the top of the description on my Bandcamp for just $5, and if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there, because it's already available, and yeah, let's dive in. Alright, so, we are at 134 BPM, a little bit faster, honestly, like, I've heard some hard techno tracks that were this tempo, so definitely the faster tempo kind of makes it feel a bit more upbeat, and the first sound here is the lead. <laughs> So, the lead, there's a lot of notes here, but it's not actually that many notes, because if you look at this, it's actually just kind of walking up and down the C sharp, or the C minor scale. You can see, we have C, which is the root note, of course, D sharp, minor third, F is the fourth, G, it would be the fifth, G sharp would be the minor sixth, and this A sharp here, which you can see we also have an A sharp and a G sharp down here. The A sharp is just a minor seventh. And then another C. So if you look at that, it's literally just like from the bottom of the scale up to the top. But then there's a lesson in there, which is essentially like, you know, when you're writing these kinds of melodies, so you want to choose like one scale and pretty much stick to it. But like, try to get the most mileage out of each note. Like if you notice here, like we're repeating a lot of notes. There's a lot of like... <laughs> Like there, like that pattern, like. That's only three notes, but like, you know, if we had one and two. We can hear it's a lot catchier if you stick with the. So yeah, like, like I said, like, don't just be so quick to jump to like a higher note when you're writing melodies like this. Try repeating notes a lot, and there's nothing wrong with doing, like, this kind of a run where it'll go, like, up to that high note, and then just back down to the same middle note that it was at before. Like, it's really not... You don't want to just be jumping around so much. It's, like, jumping around, but in a controlled way, and, like, knowing how to repeat notes so that it's not too much. Because if you have too many notes in your melody, one, nobody's going to remember it, and two, it's just going to be sensory overload. The point of a simple melody and using like less notes is that it's literally on the most basic level less stuff for your listener's brain to try to process it's like you know if they hear this that's very easy to take in but if they hear this that's so much more stuff for your brain to try to understand at once so it's like just try to make it simple basically for the sound here this is made with analog so yeah, lots of analog in this project file. Just lots of like trying to recreate that like kind of warm analog synthesis sound. So what we have here is we just have two saw waves going into a low pass filter here. You can see I have an envelope on that. So that's what's creating the plot. We get the amp envelope set in a similar way. And then we have the unison and vibrato. And the vibrato is really good for this style. Like if you're trying to make your sounds sound a lot more like old school and like that kind of analog synth feel, the vibrato will actually do a lot more than you would think. The reason why is because a lot of times, like, older synths tend to have a bit of, like, pitch drift, where essentially, if I slow this down, you can really hear it. Like, that's a very extreme case of it, but it's, like, that kind of sound, where you can hear it, like, slowly moving around the notes. So, adding this on here just gives it, like, kind of a bit more character, and that's typically what we would associate with like a warm analog sound thus without adding more like saturation or like weird you know bit reduction or anything like that it's just a very simple way to add more flavor and more analog texture to your leads then we just have a bit of chorus and some echo you can see there's no reverb here just the echo again keeping it really simple the type of music although this is a pretty full track in terms of like having elements here <laughs> You can still hear the space between each element, and it's really about saying more with less. So, like, if you're going to have echo, don't also have reverb. Like, you kind of, like, choose which one. And then I just have a bit of drum bus. 
which just makes it a bit fatter. And that is it for the lead. Then we have this first pad. So there's two pads here. There's this one that you're hearing now, and then there's also the one underneath it. Which just plays like the chord progression. So this one, yeah, it's just playing these single note lines here. It's basically just meant to be notes that are going to work really well with the bass line. It starts on the root note. And then the bass line actually goes up to A sharp there. But this goes to D sharp. So it's like just kind of playing off of what the bass line's doing. And this is subtle, but it adds a lot to the overall mix to just have like a kind of droning. Sort of, it's almost like a counter melody too. And this is using that exact same scale that I just showed you for the lead too. So it's like just kind of taking that and doing something a little bit different with it. You know, these notes are a bit more spaced out. And then for the sound, this one is made with wavetable. So it's basically just like a super saw type of sound. You can see we just have two saw waves here, detuned a bunch. They're in the same octave. And then that's going into a low pass filter, which has just a tiny little bit of this LFO on it, you can see. But it's just giving it that little bit of movement. You know, I like to do little subtle stuff like this that you may not always notice is like, oh yeah, there's obviously an LFO going like super loud on it. Like we turn this. You know, that's definitely a lot more obvious, but just having the little subtle one like this. It's just meant to give the sound a little bit of movement. There's also some movement being created by the detuning of the two oscillators and the unison over here. And yeah, and then we have the unison. You can see there's quite a bit of that. The voices are at eight. So I've got the amount up like about halfway, but it's just making it this really big, wide sound. Like this is really meant to be one of the widest sounds in the mix. And it really helps it like sit in its own place. You know, this is how you have like this many synths without having it get buried. And then we just have a bit of reverb on that, and then some drum bus to fatten it up. And we can even add just a little bit of a high pass filter at the end too. And that is it for that first pad. Then we have pad two. This is playing a pretty simple progression. Again, we're in the key of C minor. So it's C minor, A sharp major, and then F minor. So it's kind of like, like that movement's really simple. And then we just add that, that chord in the middle. But yeah, so, you know, the chord progression with the style, you just want something that's going to be not too complicated, just maybe like three or four chords or something like that. Can you hear these two chords? Or there's even like one chord tracks. But it's just something like big like this that really feels like like you could sing over this. Now for the sound with this one, it is made with analog. So we have two saw waves, detuned, going into a low pass filter. This one has an LFO on it, which is a lot more than that last LFO. Because I wanted this to be a very different sound from the first pad so you can tell that they're different this way and the amp envelope is set like that you can see it's a pretty slow LFO and then I have the unison and the vibrato it's the same deal as before with the vibrato you know gives it that nice kind of like pitch warble and then we just have a bit of chorus and a bit of reverb so those are just giving the sound some space and some stereo width and then finally we just have a high pass filter cutting at the low end you know making sure this won't get in the way of the bass and that is it for the second pad. Then we have this orchestra stab. So you can hear what this is doing. It just plays that kind of over top of everything. This is a classic sound. So this is like very similar to a sound you guys have probably heard if you listen to like any of the old like 90s and late 80s New Jack Swing style stuff and like just that very kind of like you know, like, it sounds like it's like a stab from, like, an old keyboard or something like that. And this is, like, there's a ton of these. You can get this one link in the description. But, yeah, there's, like, you know, there's a ton of different ways to get these. And then the idea here is, like, usually you would just have one of these, but you wouldn't have a chord progression. The interesting thing with this music is that we have a chord progression 
and we have one of these playing underneath it. And it just comes every four bars. But you can hear it, it's like, it's about the note that it's playing. Like, if you notice, it actually kind of sounds a little bit odd. If you play it with the chords on the other. But it's like, just fitting really well. Like, when we go down there. Just have that, huh? However, top of the chord progression really works well. So that's the idea with this one. And this one's just going through a bit of reverb. You know, just gives it that space. Since there's so much space between the notes, you can really get, like, a longer one. And then we have some drum bus to make it a bit stronger. And then finally just a high pass filter because these tend to have a bit of like no end that can get in the way of your sounds. And then we have the kick. So yeah, this is just like a nice punchy, fat drum machine style kick. The main thing you want to notice about this one is that it's like a Lin drum or a 707 style kick. That's what you want to go for is like a 707 or a Lin drum like kind of 80s drum machine style kick and then you just take it and make it fatter with processing so here's without this and without this too like you can hear you know it's a little bit of a smaller sound and then we just use drum bus to like really make it fat and then also the processing that's happening on the group there and then we have the bass line So yeah, that's just following the chord progression, but what you'll notice is that the chord progression technically goes down, because it goes C, G sharp, and then F, but then you can see that what's happening with, like, this one is it's going down there, here we have it going up. So it's like that juxtaposition when you hear, you're expecting it to go down. You know, it just makes things a little bit more interesting if you have the bass line doing one thing and the pads doing another. And the other thing with this is like the way it's articulated, like the do 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 You know, it's a very like, almost I want to say like choppy pattern. But it just creates that groove with the kick. And so this one's made with wavetable. You can see we have the sub oscillator as well as a square wave. And then we have a sub wave, or another square wave on top of that, which is just an octave up. And then those are going into a low-pass filter, which as you can see has an envelope. And it's the same envelope as the amplitude. I like using the amplitude envelope for the filter envelope when you can, because it kind of makes the whole synth more, like, cohesive, because you're having these both play at the same, kind of, like, on the same thing, versus, like, if I set this, like, let's say I had this envelope like this, and this envelope like this, it's going to be kind of messy, because it's not going to quite line up. This way, they perfectly line up. Then I just have a bit of unison, you can see we have that on the classic setting. Three voices, the amounts on third, you know, you don't want a whole lot with this one, you just want a little bit to make it big. But you still need that low end to be tight. And then I just have some drum bus on that one to make it a bit fatter, which really helps to take a bass, like, out of the synth and make it feel like a really just big, full, monster bass line like this. Then we just have an EQ8, which is cutting out some room at 100 hertz, so just cutting out a bit of room for the kick. And then we are also boosting the lows a little bit. And yeah, that is it for the bass line. Then on the groove of the line, so we just have a bit of saturation. You know, just something like this. The thing is, a lot of times in this music, it's meant to sound like it's going through like analog gear and like it's going through maybe like a desk or a tape machine or something like that. It's a really great way to recreate that because essentially what's happening when you do those processes is you're putting multiple things through the same like saturation. Or, and also a little bit of compression here and there with those old tape devices and stuff. But essentially, like, putting the, you're putting them through the same saturation, and that's what creates that kind of, like, glued together sound with, like, tape machines and using, like, a actual mixing desk and all that kind of stuff. It's just the little bit of saturation that you're getting is kind of, like, pushing things closer together because it adds harmonics onto sounds in places where it doesn't originally have it, and it kind of, like, bridges the gap between your two sounds. Like how the bass line... Might be a lot happening down here, like where the cursor's moving, and the kick might be happening more like up here. But then the saturation is going to put some harmonics onto both of them that's going to kind of make them glue together. And so, yeah, this is just recreating that, but that's what you would get, like, if you just put these through like a mixing desk together or something. 
Then we have the snare. So yeah, it's just a nice, big, fat, 80s style snare. You know, this is what you want. So this is just going through some reverb. Here's without that. And with it, you can hear the reverb is actually pretty important because you really want this to be. Like, you want to hear that ringing out to really get the effect. If you don't have that, or if it's, like, too quick, like, we make the snare, like, that. You can hear it doesn't quite work as well. It does those little fills like that. This part. And yeah, after the reverb, we just have some drum bus. And then the last thing down here, the hi hat. So yeah, we have like this one, which is more of an open hi hat. You know, just like a softer sort of sound. And then there's this one, which is more like an 808 hi hat. And yeah, this is just playing like a lot more kind of busy notes. You know, they play at the same time. But then this one adds some extra notes in there that aren't being played on the open hi-hat. And then I have those in a group together because, like, if this was just one hi-hat and it's the same processing, I would have put on the one. But I just like to process them together since we have two. Might as well try to make them sound like they're kind of in the same place. So we just have these going through some reverb. So again, the reverb is pretty important, like, in terms of the drums in the style track. It's all about that atmosphere. And then we just have some drum bus on there, which is making these a bit fatter. And it also brings out the reverb. And you'll notice I have the damp turned down too, because what happens is like, you know, with these style of tracks where it's a bit more analog sounding, typically something that makes things sound analog is when they don't have like super pristine bright highs. Like when that little bit of high end is cut off, it's not a lot. And if you do too much, it's, gonna, it's not going to sound right. It's not going to sound authentic. But just that little tiny bit of it, is what kind of helps to create that like lo-fi sort of analog feel and especially like with hi-hats where they have a lot of high end you want to do that so the damp knob is a great way to do that here's without it and with it really really subtle but just kind of like all those little subtle things that you do are what is going to add up to make the whole track feel you know authentic and real and yeah <laughs> So yeah, that is going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets. Everything like that from this video is available right at the top of the description on my Bandcamp. And yeah, this is a really great way to support me if you guys are enjoying these videos. YouTube doesn't pay me a whole lot, but with these sample packs and different things like this, I'm able to keep going and keep bringing you guys new tutorials every day and teaching you styles that aren't out there on the internet. And yeah, so thank you so much everybody, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.